Thank you. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Uh, your worship, uh, schedule our disclosure. So 11 1, schedule of accounts. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, item three, approval or amendments of meeting agenda. Be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the regular meeting dated December 21st, 2021 as presented. A mover and a seconder, please. Pat and Bill, any discussion on the agenda? All in favor? Carry. Item four, approval of minutes. Be it resolved that council approve the following minutes as presented. Committee to hold meeting December the 7th, 2020. A mover and a seconder. Matthew and Joe. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Go ahead, Doug. Well, thank you, Your Worship. I just, in reviewing the minutes, I noticed that you had uh, pointed out to us that DSAB in their annual report to us had indicated a substantial increase in the number of seniors seeking uh, support for residency. And I thought that would be an ideal subject to send to our neighboring communities and ask to join them with us in lobbying DSAB to uh, continue to protect and enhance housing for our seniors. Perhaps we could put that on the agenda for our next committee of the whole meeting. And, uh, Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Doug. Very good idea. Have it down here. Okay. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Very. Business arising from the minutes we've just done. Inquiries, members of the general public, delegations and presentations. We have none. No business arising. Items for council direction. Resolution to receive Aquas 2021 cost estimate and a five-year plan. Be it resolved that the Town of Cobalt accept 2022 notice of possible capital expenditures in accordance with the current fixed price agreement with Ontario Clean Water Agency and further refers to the recommendation to the 2022 capital budget process. And further that the Town of Cobalt endorses the five-year capital plan. A mover and a seconder, please. Matt and Doug, discussion on the matter? Go ahead, Doug. Uh, just to note, Your Worship, that uh, although it is a five-year plan, this notion of uh, long wait times to get vital components bothers me a great deal. And so I would like to see us in our budget considerations uh, make a special effort to see if we can complete the uh, stocking of those vital components as early as possible, rather than necessarily waiting for the full five years to pan out. Absolutely, duly noted. Any other discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. 9.2, a resolution RE municipal, uh, municipal uh, affairs, schedule F and the town of Cobalt as guarantee for the DSAB town affordable housing at the Fraser project. Be it resolved that the town of Cobalt irrevocably and unconditionally guarantee the due and punctual payment and performance of all present and future debts, liabilities and obligations collectively and the guaranteed obligations, the town of Cobalt to the province of Ontario pursuant to the provincial contribution agreement under which the province contributed the amount of $1,517,500 towards a project known as the Fraser House Renewal 24 Prospect Avenue Cobalt. Is there any discussion on that? A mover and a seconder, sorry. Matt and Bill, uh, is there any discussion on it? John, are you uh, in, within earshot? Yes, I am, yeah, Your Worship. Would you speak to this matter, please, if you don't mind? Certainly. Um, when the project first started uh, a number of years ago, this particular uh, agreement um, on the guarantee of the uh, monies that the province put into the project 
there, the town came and um, granted the agreement. It was between uh, Kotem, the town, uh, and the province. So now that Kotem has left the scene um, and DSAD is stepping into their shoes, uh, our, our position with, uh, with the, this whole process was that that guarantee uh, would be taken off the table. And that the the reason for the guarantee was that the, that monies went towards affordable housing in, in Cobalt. So now when we received this uh, agreement, we're a little bit shocked because it just replaced the uh, the name of Cotem with uh, DSAB. So we are guaranteeing uh, the monies uh, for DSAB, <laughs> which is, is quite, uh, quite awkward in my mind. Um, it does have some ramifications if, for whatever reason, DSAB uh, uh, goes away or, or steps back, then uh, you know it, there may well be some steps by the province to call in that loan of 1.5 million. So in the last discussions we had with the province, uh, we asked a number of questions. Um, what are, what's the length of the term? Because we don't know where it started from their end. What's the payout on this particular uh, agreement? In other words, it, it does it go annually and reduce annually and all that. So uh, we'd certainly hope that uh, that would be here by this date and it, and it has not been. Uh, our questions have been put forward in writing and, and we haven't got a response, but they have uh, placed in our, on our agenda sort of thing, the agreement. That's the, that's the only step that they have. And uh, in my recommendation, it's, uh, it has uh, too much of a pitfall uh, and danger of exposure and risk management to the uh, municipality. And there has to be a better way to look at this. My, my hopes were, were that we would have more information from the province and maybe we can negotiate a thing such as a, a resolution stating that the town is in favor of uh, affordable housing and certainly for the term of the, uh, the agreement. But to just go ahead and have council authorize a $1.5 million loan guarantee um, I think is, is uh, a step that would uh, put the uh, municipality back in a situation where it was right from the beginning, which was for some reason guaranteeing a, a loan on a project that it had no full control over. Okay. Are there any, any further questions, any discussion on the matter from anyone else? Any? Okay. We've got a mover and a seconder. No, I just have a question. Ahead, Bill. Sorry, Bill. No, no I, I, can, I, I, I'm anticipating an answer from the province because I'd like to see what they got to say on this. I, I kind of, like I agree with John for sure. Uh, but I want to, uh, hopefully we get an answer soon in the new year. Absolutely. Doug? You're muted, Doug. See, all things can be fixed. It's wonderful. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I share a number of uh, uh, questions about this project and our ability to guarantee it. Uh, John's points, I think, you know, point out that we don't have enough information to make a reasonable decision at the present time. Uh, most particularly, too, if we're going to guarantee a, 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 put a, a million, one million five hundred and seventeen thousand bucks. I'm wondering what that's going to do to our financial capacity in, in trying to do any other projects whatsoever. Uh, it's a significant uh, sum of money. And if we're ever called, I think we would be dead in the water for a fairly long period of time before we could do very much of anything. Uh, so certainly I would think we should have further discussions with the province. Uh, I'm not happy that we would become the, the complete holder of all of the debt uh, when other participants are still exercising control or had been exercising control. So I certainly I think there's room for discussions there. And I, I I would like to delay anything on this. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Sorry, ahead. Your Worship. Your Worship, yeah. I was opposed. I was opposed, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I realize that. Thank you. Okay. 9.3, resolution to declare municipal lot surplus, 52 Jameson. 
Brief result that the town of Cobalt declare 52 Jamison surplus to municipal needs and further that an appraisal be obtained from the proper, uh, for the property, proceed for sale once the requirements of the lot disposal bylaw have been met. A mover and a seconder, please. Matt and Joe, discussion? Go ahead, Bill. What does the bylaw proposal removal mean, please? Somebody explain that to me. Go ahead, uh, John, can you speak on this, please? Yes, so this, this is one step going towards uh, the actual disposition of the property. In other words, putting it up for sale. We, we have an interested buyer in it. And so for us, the municipality to put the property up for sale, we have to go through a number of uh, legal steps. The first one is um, ensuring that it's, uh, it's surplus to our municipal needs of which, which that was done. And so once we ensure that it's surplus to our municipal need, uh, needs, then we go through the process of advertising it and, and uh, actually putting it up for sale. And, it comes back to council, but the primary, the first step always has to be uh, declaring it surplus to the municipal needs. And that's what this resolution does. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, all in favor? Thank you. 9.4, resolution to commit to funding any cost overruns on a wellness and fitness center, should our grant request be approved? Uh, be covered by municipal revenue operating work and reserves. Current budgeted municipal share is 9.4K. Be it resolved that the Town of Cobalt confirm funding commitments towards the Cobalt Wellness and Fitness Center, project number 750026, through an approved budget of 9.4K and further commit to funding any overruns in project costs under current municipal revenue and operating work and reserves. Uh, mover and a seconder, please. No mover, no seconder. Matt and Joe for discussion. Go ahead, Matt. To your worship. Um, the Wellness and Fitness Center, there's been a lot of um, discussion regarding the proposed location of, of the uh, fitness center itself and this grant request is it specific to any uh, any set location or is this just a grant request while we try and iron out details as to the finalization of a position or uh, location i would i think it is just a request i don't believe we've committed to any anything that's correct i believe that's yes okay thank you okay go ahead pat do we have a budget for that that we could take a look at? Uh, no. Included in it? Is that we've, the equipment, that kind of we've applied for a grant. Uh -huh. This is conditional upon approval of the grant. Mm -hmm. So we don't I have don't a. I don't think we saw anything towards that grant, or was that a year and a half or two years ago? That was quite ago? some time ago. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That one, okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Uh, item for council information 9.5 Phenom Media Release December the 5th, 2020. Uh, what's this called? Sir. Any questions on the Phenom release? No, that's the only one we have for information. We resolve that council accept the items as presented. A mover and a seconder, please. Pat, Pat, discussion, none. All in favor? Thank you. Item 10, bylaws. 10.1 of bylaw 21-40, to adopt a surveillance video, uh, a video surveillance policy. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2021-40 being a bylaw to adopt a video surveillance policy for the town of Cobalt be taken as read as first 
second and third time and finally passed this 21st day of December 2021. And further, that said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and recorded in the bylaw book. A mover and a seconder, please. Matthew and Joe. Discussion? Go ahead, uh, Doug. Muted. Muted again. That's just so you guys can't hear the other stuff I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, having said that, um, I, I wanted to note, first of all, that a person who was uh, uh, stealing some stuff out of some residences in North Bay was caught on video this very day and arrested. Uh, so this kind of a program works uh, with positive results, and I'm very pleased with that. My only other problem is that we're doing first, second, and third readings all at once. And I would very much prefer that we go back to a first and second reading in one meeting and a third and final reading in a follow up meeting, only because that gives our public a chance to really address the policies that we're putting forward to also have a chance to acknowledge and, and research them and make comment. So that said, uh, can I make an amendment that suggests we do it for first and second reading tonight? No problem. I don't think there's a problem with that. John, there's no problem with doing that, is there? Um, thank you, Your Worship. No, there's no problem with doing that, except that uh, that's the purpose of the Committee of the Whole, is to go through and ensure there's any questions, and in the next meeting, uh, go through first, second, and third reading. So by doing it uh, this way, with uh, it, it, uh, in my mind, eliminates the purpose of the uh, Committee of the Whole, but further, it means that uh, items that could be of, of importance are now going to be eight weeks uh, apart before final uh, final approval. So other than that, the amendment is uh, is fine if council wishes to amend, but council should feel free to do so. Go ahead, Doug. Well, first of all, you know, I appreciate John's point. Uh, there is a time lag there and, and time lags can be important. Uh, but in a policy of this nature, I'm not sure it's hugely important at this point in time. But I do think uh, issues that are discussed in committee of the whole are not ultimately the actual final product that's going to be necessarily brought to council. There could be changes en route. And so I would suggest that uh, uh, the little bit of extra time that it takes, uh, it would be four weeks tonight to actually pass it the third time. Uh, is, I think, worth it in the interests of giving our uh, residents an opportunity uh, for further discussion and review. Okay. Does anybody have any? Uh, I can see Doug's point in mm -hmm. putting it off for a third reading if there is changes. Um, you know, like we went through it two weeks ago, if there's changes in there, amendments that had to be made and everything, then yeah, this is time to take another look at it and yeah. put off the final vote. But if there isn't, it just seems to be an awful lot of delay. That's my idea anyway. Any other questions from councillors? Any anyone opposed to doing it? A third time uh, reading it the third time next to committee meeting? Go ahead, uh, Doug. Oh, I'm I'm still opposed to the idea of doing first, second, yeah. and third in one sitting. Yeah, I don't. I, think I agree. That's I, fair. I kind of agree. It's a third time would be nice if we did it. Bill. Yeah, I I, uh, I like uh, Doug's proposal. I think the uh, first, second, and third in one meeting is a little too much. I think uh, you never know. Somebody may be able to come forward or get a chance to uh, uh, to get further information, especially the public. Uh, uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I think that's uh, that's a good idea that we should follow through on that. Okay. So do we have to reread the uh, motion or uh, the bylaw or just eliminate the third reading and do it at the next committee to hold meeting? Go ahead, uh, Doug. Well, technically, I think you would uh, call a vote on the amendment to limit it to the first and second reading. And once that was approved, then you would read as a first and second okay. and then put that if, if, if the amendment is I passed. Out of this time. Okay. okay, can we get a motion then to amend Lila 2021-40 to adopt surveys video to do the first and second tonight and the third reading at the next committee to hold meeting? 
mover and a seconder on that one. Doug and Matt, all in favor? Okay. Okay, can we, have, did we get a mover and a seconder for the first and second reading? Okay, all in favor? Okay, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. 11, general business, schedule of accounts. Be it resolved that council receive the following schedule as presented, schedule number 2021-23 in the amount of $110,748.68. A mover and a seconder. Pat and Joe, any discussion or questions on the account? All in favor? Very. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Item 13, motion for which prior notice has been given. We have none. Mayor's report, we have none. Notice of motion. None. Councillor updates? None. Councillor questions and answers? Go ahead, Bill. Uh, I just have a question about, uh, I, I just I'm, I remember uh, Vic's presentation and I talked to him about the, uh, the wetlands order. And uh, I, I presume there's been no, nothing come down the pipe yet. Uh, I presume we, we would likely be looking for a an extension on that order again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm wondering if somebody from, uh, to give me a little bit more explanation on it, somebody from Story Environmental could come to one of our meetings uh, to see exactly why they're delaying uh, or trying to delay this and try to get another extension. That's what I understand that they're looking for an extension. And this, this order has been on the books for a long time. And uh, a long, long time. And uh, so I'm wondering where we stand with that and uh, why they're delaying it, why they're looking for the extension rather than just bite the bullet. John, could you uh, respond to a little bit of that? Yes, I, I'm not uh, too clear on the, the, the term extension here. What, what is in place is a draft order that uh, asked for a, a number of things. Um, we appealed that order, and so it hasn't been issued yet uh, formally. Um, the province themselves have asked for time to review our points. I mean, we sent on a, a multi-page letter addressing each one of the points uh, that they raised in the order, and uh, so they're looking at that. Um, nobody from uh, Story, I don't believe, and well, nobody there will be able to give you the answer that you're asking for. Uh, Councillor Gabani, because uh, the the province shares that information with us, uh, the town of Cobalt, and, and not with our consultant um, first, and then we share it with our consultant. So our our expectation is, um, if you recall back to the, uh, and I don't want to go on too long with this because it is a long, complicated process with the wetlands, is uh, our expectation is that uh, they'll come in. Um, with an order, we look at the order. Aqua has made a number of recommendations based on though the order was going to be issued, uh, which is uh, you know fine for now. But uh, if they change, then we have to uh, be able to accommodate that. So we'll have to wait for this particular order to come into place, if and when it does. Uh, we fought the issue of an order uh, right from the beginning because we felt that we were taking the proper and necessary steps. Uh, in getting this process done. Um, that did not convince the province. They issued a, uh, a draft order, gave us the opportunity to look at it, make comment, we did. Uh, we made comment and we appealed, the, uh, we appealed it. So we're sitting now in a, in a sort of a limbo until uh, we get a final, um, a final decision by the province. I don't understand, John, 
what you mean by a draft order. It's either an order or it's not an order, but if it's a draft order, why would you have to appeal something because it's not a legal order? No, uh, fair point. The, the order uh, once appealed is still in draft form because that's part of the process. When they give the order, they say, uh, you have the opportunity to appeal this, which we did. So the order itself is not enforceable now because we are in an appeal, like a trial kind of thing. We are in an appeal period um, and they're looking at it because we made so many comments on the particular order itself. Okay, thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Doug. Muted. <laughs> Oh, lordy, lordy. I'm going to get used to that eventually. Um, I, just just remembering back when the, the, the concept of the wetlands was initiated, um, it was an experiment, a grand experiment, to find a way to deal with sewage in a uh, inexpensive, natural pro process. And since that time, uh, we have been going back and forth with the province in a number of different areas on a number of different orders about aspects where we've said they want one thing we would like to try something else to see if we can make it better or different but still meet the requirements of the province and again in this last instance um, the story environmental noted the order wants us to re-establish the berms that were put in back when it was first designed uh, the story's position is going in and mucking about trying to reestablish those may do more harm than good to the current status of the wetland. And they want to study what is in fact happening over a period of time to see if in fact there is at this point in its development a reason to want to go back to the original design or can we try or stay with something <laughs> better. So, you know, one thing costs us money, one thing may or may not do damage to it, may benefit, may not benefit. So. Uh, the story position is let's take a look at it and assess it before we jump. And I kind of concur with them. I, I think it's a good idea to see if we can get the maximum out of this before we start making changes to its evolution. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Nothing else? Okay. No closed session. No business arising. Closed session. Confirmation bylaw. Be resolved that bylaw number 2021-41 be a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council. The corporation of the town of Cobalt be taken as read a first, second, and third time and finally passed this 21st day of December 2021. And further, that said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and recorded in the bylaw. A mover and a seconder, please. Joe and Pat. All in favor? Thank you. 21, adjournment. Be it resolved that the regular meeting of council be adjourned at 7.05. Mover and a seconder, please. Thank you very much, uh, Doug and Matt. And a vote, all in favor. And before we sign off, I want to wish everyone a very, very good holiday and Christmas and a happy New Year's. And we'll see everyone in the New Year's with large smiling faces thank you everybody thank you everyone there you thank go. you your worship thank you thank you john okay thanks john <laughs>